Why hello there. In case you didn't know, I have reached 80,000 subscribers. That's so badass. Okay. But for real, that's actually really crazy. I can't believe 80,000 people have like watched one of my videos and decided that they want to watch more and click subscribe. Um, that completely blows my mind. Um, when my channel was about half of this size, I had a girl that I was met in Seattle while I was traveling tell me that I have more subscribers um, on YouTube than the village she grew up in in Austria. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. I'm like, that's so wild to me. So I don't really know how to say thank you to every single person individually. The best thing I can think of is a Q&A. So I asked you guys some questions on the YouTube community tab and on Instagram. So I'm gonna answer the most repetitive ones and the ones I get asked a lot. So without further ado, I'm gonna have to answer these like short and to the point and I can't elaborate on them just because I wanna answer as many as I can as possible. A lot of questions I get asked about are about spirituality, depression, I'm sorry. <laughs> a lot of the questions I've been asked have been about spirituality, depression, um, mental health issues, and a few other topics that really just need their own video. So be patient with me. I have a ton of video ideas and I'm just trying to hammer them out as often as I can. What does gift giving look like for you? For me, gift giving at Christmas, we just do like a secret Santa with my family. Uh, that wasn't because of me or because of minimalism. That's just what we already did. We started doing that a few years ago, which is awesome. So I only have to buy one present per person in my family. It's gonna be a lot more individual than having to buy presents for 20 people. With my closest friends, that's the only person I really buy like birthday presents for and our birthdays are both close to Christmas so we don't do Christmas presents, we just do birthday presents and they're very like emotional close-knit presents and they're not usually physical things which is really cool. The goal of the present is to be super like touching that we make each other cry but we see what happens. How do you deal with a small wardrobe for special occasions? I don't go really to that many special occasions. I haven't gone to a single wedding since I graduated or anything like that. I have like a suit for interviews, which I really haven't even used that often, but I keep it just in case for that. And then I have the dress and heels that I wore to graduation, which is appropriate for any warm weather special occasion. And that is the outfit that I've worn to every single special occasion that I've had to go to since then. And I just wear the same thing and get over it. Nobody else cares. You mentioned that minimalism and nursing are not compatible. What did you mean for that? And then how do you also deal with the wastefulness of nursing? Nursing is very wasteful. I go through so much paper and plastic in a single shift as a single nurse taking care of a few people that when I think about my entire emergency room or the entire hospital or the amount of hospitals that were in a 10 mile radius in the city that I live in. It's crazy how much we waste, like straight up waste. Sometimes medications that, uh, for example, nitroglycerin is a pain medication that we give to people who are having chest pain to try to get more oxygen to their heart. And that medication bottle comes with 30 in that little jar and a patient can only ever have three max and we have to throw the other 27 away regardless and i don't know why they don't just send it in a three pack instead of sending us 30 per patient and you can't use the same vial for different patients because it's a risk of giving the wrong patient the wrong medications and blah 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 um, especially for narcotics someone might get like a half dose of morphine and we literally have to waste like i say we waste over half the narcotics that i give which is absolutely kind of ridiculous but i understand why it is that way but it's just really painful to waste all of those things how do i deal with the wastefulness for the most part i just have to disassociate from work for the most part i just have to disassociate from work and i reduce waste when i can namely when i start an iv there's usually tape left over and i keep it on top of the cart in case that patient needs tape for any other reason throughout the stay most people do and so that's kind of like the only way that i've thought to really reduce my waste has anyone reacted poorly to my minimalist lifestyle? Nothing really seriously, no. Some people don't understand it and some people are like, well, why would you do that? Why would you not want to have nice things or do this thing? And they just kind of don't get it and that's fine if I don't have the time to explain why I do something or they still just don't get it and I just move on with their life. How do I stay in touch with family when I have a complicated relationship with them? Are my friends fulfilling enough or is there a void that's left from not being close with my family? I stay in touch with them as much as I want, so Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. I like to spend that holiday with my family. I only go for three or four days, otherwise I get maxed out on the time that is with them, and then I see them maybe one or two other times a year. Currently I work Christmas. I don't have kids or anything like that. I'm fine working Christmas. Yeah, of course there's a void. Of course, like I wish I had parents that I was close to who understood who I was, that I could call when I needed help or like good advice. 
and that's not there I don't have that and I think a lot of people don't and that's okay that's just the reality for a lot of people's lives and then are my friends fulfilling enough I'm never gonna have that ideal parent relationship but I do have more than ideal friendship relationships does it make up for it not exactly but is it worth it yes can I suggest some affordable clothing brands can I suggest some affordable, sustainable clothing brands? Honestly, no, and unfortunately I don't. Um, for the most part, I still kind of buy, I basically buy fast fashion. I just buy it less and I buy it more mindfully and usually when I buy it, it's not a mistake if I buy something. There's not a lot of sustainable clothing options in my area, city, and when they are, they're so much more expensive and it's hard for me to justify spending that much money on clothing. I know, I know, I know that's bad, but, but yeah. The least thing I try to do, I'm also not vegan. I've tried several times, I just don't have the discipline. And so what I do is I don't share when I eat meat and I don't share the clothes that I have to at least try not to advertise something that I don't agree with even though I'm not quite there yet and completely sustainable and completely vegan. How are you able to rebuild your life after growing up in a toxic family? What did my parents not teach me about life? You don't realize you have unhealthy habits and repressed emotions and all these issues until you get a lot of, until you gain a lot of awareness over it and so just you know, take it as you go, gain awareness, do better, make good life choices, try to find a good example for you to follow, and try to replace the example that you didn't have with your family growing up with examples from people that you meet. And if you don't have any examples of people that you can look up to or role models or anything like that in real life, maybe you can find someone on social media or even a fictional character on TV um, can actually be very useful. How did I start yoga and what's my favorite position? I started yoga in college. I did a couple of classes, absolutely hated it. I thought I was allowing some satanic energy into my life, didn't touch it for like a year. And then honestly, it was because of Instagram. I saw all these people doing uh, handstands and I wanted to be able to do a handstand. And I was like, well, I should start doing yoga again. And just started doing yoga again. I'm doing it off and on for the last four, almost five years now. Um, inversions are my favorite. I can do a handstand with a wall behind me, but I haven't been able to balance enough without a wall. I need to build up these uh, noodle arms before I think I can do that. How do I travel so much and how do I plan my trips? So I took like three trips over five years while I was in college. Traveling this much is relatively new for me. I worked really hard in school for five years, being broke as fuck and not being able to travel. Also one of the reasons that I really stuck with nursing is because if you work in a hospital in the US, you have four days out of the week off. Um, I work three 12 hour shifts a week, I have four days off. My unit that I work on, it's really flexible scheduling so I can schedule those four days back to back and have eight days off in a row without taking any vacation time. And then if I take a week of vacation time with that, I get almost two weeks off for only taking three days worth of PTO. That is the biggest reason I'm able to travel so much. Basically, I look where flights are cheap on the days that I have off and I go where I can afford to go. I always have like a savings account for travel. I try to keep like a thousand dollars in there when I can. And so if I wanna go somewhere, I have the money to go and then I use my credit cards to pay off the rest of it and I can always pay off my credit card, usually in two to three weeks. What are my favorite books on spirituality, yoga, and minimalism? I've actually never read a book about yoga or minimalism. Everything I learned about minimalism, I learned online. I'm going to make a separate video about books that really changed my spiritual life, but to name a few is The Power of Now, An Untethered Soul, Be Here Now, and The Alchemist. How much do I put into savings? What I usually do is whenever I get a paycheck, I pay all of my bills and I put the rest of the money into savings. And then for the next two weeks, I kind of rack up bills in terms of groceries and stuff. And then I pay that off with my next paycheck. So I pay off those bills and then whatever's left over, I just put into savings. Does that make sense? How do I stay slim? I've always been a slim person. Um, I did a game like the freshman 15 and my weight fluctuates a lot. I'm honestly one of those people who has a problem under eating and not eating enough and over and gaining too much weight. When I do have those periods where I'm eating too much, I just wait until I'm at that point in my cycle where I'm not craving food every five seconds and I eat less until I get to the weight that I need to be to be healthy again. How do I deal with the stress of nursing? The most helpful thing that I learned while I was in nursing school is that unless you're a nurse, you're really not gonna understand how stressful our job is and some of the bullshit we have to put up with and trying to vent to family members and friends who aren't in the profession aren't really gonna understand. So vent to other nurses who get it. 
try to leave that like attitude and all that like oh at work and then when you need to like let off some steam basically any way you would relieve stress from other things how old are you this is really funny i googled janelle christina on youtube and just was curious what the most often searched things were and it was like janelle christina age question mark and i was like ha um i'm 24 uh, my birthday's in february so i'll turn 25 next month does your family watch your youtube videos and how do they react to the hoarding video so in that video i was trying not to say which parent was doing the hoarding to try to give them some privacy but i slipped up a few times and i think a lot of and a couple of you guys noticed but my family only found out like the last few months that i had a youtube channel when i started youtube i literally did not tell a soul because i was super like shy and embarrassed about it um for the most part they all know now my brothers like watch every single one of my videos and i think that's really touching so does my sister my mom has not called me since i've made that hoarding video and i think it's because my sister shared it onto her social media and I was like, why would you do that? She follows you, of course she's gonna see that. And so, yeah, whatever. Do I date guys, girls, or both? To be determined, I'll get back to you on that. I'm definitely somewhere on the spectrum. I'm not trying to figure all of that out right now by any means, I'm not in a rush. But when I finally have some answers, I'll definitely let you guys know. What is my skin tear routine? Shower, oil, or like a well, face moisturizer, makeup. And not a lot of makeup, very, very little makeup. How do I get rid of stuff? Like anybody else? I mean, the thing is like, the thing with donating is that most of those clothes get thrown away anyways and end up in dumps or they end up basically tossed out of a truck into some like needy neighborhood and it's just like a mountain of clothes and nobody really goes through it and it's really sad. Donating is not the answer. Recycling is not the answer. The way to not, the way to do better by the environment and by other people is to not buy things, period, and not create that demand for people to sell you things. Look into recycling and look into donations. There's also a really good documentary about NGOs and how they do more harm than good most of the time. But yeah, so if you need to throw something away, it sucks. Try to not do that first, but if that's your only option, it's your only option. You just have to do better next time. What makes me happy? Um, I don't know. Uh, like little things people who tell really good jokes funny people memes reddit i have a very morbid sense of humor and if you've only interacted with me through youtube you haven't seen that side of me but i am like a dark twisted morbid person um that just hasn't been relevant to any of the content that i've made here so far i laugh at stuff that's not politically correct it's like all the time just being honest i really like sunset i like being cozy um, I like warm, soft blankets. I like my hamster. I like being surrounded by nature and I like being surrounded by people who are real and authentic and are open-minded. It makes me really happy when like, I can be honest here about content and like the shit I'm going through and people get something out of that. That makes me really happy. But I only date someone else who is a minimalist. Not necessarily, like someone doesn't have to be a minimalist, but they have to understand and respect that I am and why I am one. But to be completely honest, it's very likely that they would also be one or someone who's very close to that. Um, just because I wouldn't just date someone who has like a completely opposite value set and like our lifestyles wouldn't match up at all. I would date someone who likes to travel and doesn't want to stay like rooted in one area for the rest of their life and stuff like that. So it's very likely if I date someone they're going to be kind of a minimalist in their own way. If not, even if they've never heard of it and don't super identify with that word. Do I have any budgeting tips? Just live within your means and if you have credit cards, pay them off every two weeks. If you're taking out student debt, take out only 50% of what you expect to make your first year out of graduating and make sure you split that 50% over all of your years of education. So let's say you wanted to be a teacher and you expect to make $45,000 a year, don't take out more than like 22 grand in debt, max, period. And so each year that's only like five grand. How do I resist shopping temptation? Usually people shop when they have too much time on their hand or they're bored or it's too accessible. So start having a hobby, do something else before you go shopping. Don't subscribe to anything that would tempt you to go shopping. Don't have any email subscriptions or let yourself be open to advertisements. Use ad blockers, stuff like that. How little do you have to have to be a minimalist? I can't answer that question and honestly no one else should have to. It's just kind of uh, when you feel comfortable with it. For me, I started calling myself a minimalist when I saw that I had around the same amount of stuff that people had in other like minimalist apartment tour videos. 
and then people also like use that word to describe me so that was kind of like confirmation bias what are your major life goals I want to undo the mistake of buying a new car. I want to pay off my student loans. I want to be able to do a handstand. And I just want to have really fulfilling relationships. And I want to see as much of the world as I can. And just be present and mindful, learn more about spirituality, unplug from the matrix when I can, stuff like that. Basically, like once I finished school, that was it. I don't know if I want to go back to school. That was very stressful. Don't know if I want to do that again, but I'm just kind of living life right now. I really want a travel nurse and that is very soon on the horizon. I've accomplished most of like the check marks on my list. So it's really cool. And YouTube, obviously. Do I want kids? Honestly, I'm so conflicted because I don't know if I want kids. I definitely don't want kids right now. Um, I wouldn't want them until I'm closer to 30 if I do have any. The biggest thing is that if I have kids, I'm going to want to have met that person I want to have kids with. And if I meet someone who I'm ready to live the rest of my life with, I feel like that decision is going to be influenced a lot by what they want and not necessarily in a bad way like that's totally okay if they're very strongly about not having kids and that person is worth it for me and we have a very full life outside of being parents i'm totally down for that at the moment but that opinion can change later on and if they're like gung-ho about it and they're willing to do it with me and i'm still kind of wishy-washy about it then i'm down to be a parent too for me the question shouldn't be do i want to have kids it's do i want to raise a human being and be a mother and that's a very different question when you phrase it that way. And that's like a lot of responsibility and a commitment for like 20 plus years that I am undecided on right now. How do I minimize unhealthy relationships? Sometimes you need to like just confront a situation head on and be like, hey, like I'm gonna have this conversation with you and explain this and say that you can't be in my life anymore and like completely cut that person out of your life, kind of maybe dramatically or at least have like a very definitive before and after. And other times you can just kind of let things seem to like slip away. You know, you stop replying to texts, you don't call as often, you don't reach out as often, maybe you don't reply as often. You fade away, you move, and eventually at some point you're like, oh, that person I used to talk to. And it can it depends a lot depending on what the relationship is, if it's family, friends, a relationship. What was my motivation for getting into nursing? At the time, I was very religious. I wanted to be a labor and delivery nurse, and I wanted people to experience the love and joy of Jesus through me. <laughs> and so that was like a huge part of it. Um, the reason that I chose emergency nursing now after some time has gone by is because it's kind of like a really hard area to be in and I'm someone who's personally like attracted to bad things but this is a way for me to be attracted to a difficult negative situation and be like good. I don't know how I want to say this. I'm someone who can be attracted to unhealthy relationships and unhealthy people and dark, twisted, sad situations. And being in the emergency room, you obviously see like, you know, a lot of death, a lot of passing, a lot of like terrible, really sad diagnoses and stuff like that. And that's a way for me like to be in those situations, but to do good while I'm there, if that makes sense. Also, I did not know I wanted to work in emergency until I got a tech job there by kind of complete accident. And I was like, this is gonna be cool. And then I really liked it. I, I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie. Like when a patient codes, we're like, all right, let's go drop everything. CPR, compression. Like it's cool to know what to do in a crisis situation when someone goes down. Also, you see a lot of people when the facade of who they play, like their role in an actual day doesn't matter. Like, fuck, they broke their leg or this is happening or they got diagnosed with cancer or they need surgery. And it's like a very real and raw moment for them. And I like dealing with people at that. Okay, I've got a couple more last minute questions from Instagram. Some are pretty cool, so I'm gonna answer uh, a few of them. How is life going? Uh, if you watched my depression video, I've had a lot of five and six days lately. Uh, it could be better. I've been at a four for a few days, which has been nice. What is the oldest item I own and why do I keep it? The oldest item I have is like this little toy that I got when I was born and I have like I think a picture with it maybe. It's just a little like ragdoll rabbity thing and it's in my sentimental box. What is my approach to meals and eating? I am the most undisciplined person when it comes to food. Do not look up to me by any means. Just realize you don't have to have meat with every meal. Uh, I eat about 50 to 80 percent vegan depending on how disciplined I am at the time. And a lot of times I'll just have two things on my plate, like sweet potatoes and beans or like rice and something else, you know. What are some things that people should add to their life because of minimalism? I think you should add more things that add value to your life. Anything that makes you feel 
more like you, any healthy relationships, creativity, more healthy habits, more nature, more mindfulness for the most part. Do you participate in any exercise activities like cardio or lifting weights? Um, I have done both of those things in the past. Right now I'm only doing yoga. It's been like that for a few months. Have I dealt with manipulation or gaslighting? If so, how did I confront that situation? The manipulating thing I've done and, or I've been through, and it took me a while to realize that I was being manipulated and then I was like, oh hell no, nah, the fuck? Call people out when they're manipulating. You don't have to get aggressive about it. Be like, hey, you're trying to do this so I can do this and that's not okay. And basically, like some people don't realize they're manipulating people and you just have to like call them out on it. Um, and when people gaslight me, it's usually not someone I'm interested in having a conversation with and I just ignore the situation. And then do you realize your videos have made an impact on people's lives? Kind of. Not really to the extent that I think maybe they have it for some people, but it's really cool. Any advice for shy introverts going into the nursing field? Um, you can outgrow shyness 100%. I definitely did. I didn't used to be able to talk to people and I never thought I would ever make YouTube videos like this. It'll come in time. Don't rush it. Just, you know, take little steps to get out of your shyness comfort zone. And you can be introverted and not shy. It's totally possible to be introverted and not shy. What are your thoughts on marriage? There's a good chance I might not get married, but I might get married. I reject a lot of the old ideas surrounding marriage as like woman as property or securing a future or getting married out of loneliness or fear of being uncomfortable because you're by yourself possibly for the rest of your life. And if you think that you're getting married, you'll always have a companion and you'll be happy. I get how it makes a lot of sense for tax purposes. I think if you get married, you should reinvent the ideas. And I don't think anyone below the age of 20 has any idea who the fuck they are and they shouldn't get married yet for the most part. Like I've already seen a lot of the people who got married right after college or um, while they were in college or high school sweethearts get married and divorce. Uh, there's very few people, one of them being a close friend of mine, they have their idea of a perfect marriage and I'm very happy for them and I respect their marriage because it works out really good and they have a beautiful little family now. But for the most part when I see marriages it's not like that. And I think a lot of people rush into it because of expectations or feeling that they'll have something solidified through companionship for the rest of their life. And I think a lot of the reasons why people get married are based out of fear and you definitely shouldn't do that. I think marriage makes a lot of sense if you're having kids or if you have a forever companion and you don't want to have kids. Any advice for someone who just graduated and feels overwhelmed by the amount of choices and options and had? How do you minimize and simplify the choices? If you have a lot of good options in front of you, awesome. You're better off than a lot. Pick whichever one sounds interesting, fun, and also will give you like some security. I'm sure if you went to college, it's because you want a comfortable living situation and wage. And so whichever option gives you the most bang for your buck. There's a quote and I'm gonna butcher it, but it basically says something along the lines of but there is no right or wrong to the universe. Like if you have options A or B, like one isn't right and one isn't necessarily wrong, they're just gonna be different and so the universe doesn't punish you for choosing B and it doesn't punish you for choosing A, you're just gonna live different lifestyles and you're gonna have different pros and cons to both of them, but neither of them are inherently wrong. So whichever you choose, it's not gonna be a wrong decision if that makes sense. What non-related nursing courses did you enjoy the most? I loved my anthropology class. That's what I wanted to switch my major to when I switched. <laughs> I switched my major for semester because I thought nursing was going to be too hard and that's what I switched to and sometimes I'm like man I should have just done that anyways. Was I ever broke? <laughs> Girl bye, yes. One year I made five thousand dollars for the entire year like I still have my W-2 form from that year. I had my own car, I was paying for all the gas, I was paying for all of my groceries. I was paying rent every month on my own. Uh, like no financial support from my parents except for they paid for my phone bill. <laughs> that shit was a struggle. My only hope was that I would make it through nursing school and one day have money to do things. So yeah. All right, that is the end of the video. I hope it didn't take too long. Um, I really don't know how long this video is. But yeah, so thank you guys so, so much for 80K. Blows my mind. It's crazy. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. Oh, real quick, join the Real With Less Facebook group if you want to join an intentional community about uh, getting rid of your crap and living a more real life with less stuff, basically. Um, I'll leave a description down below, but for real, bye.